another quick video on the silver bayonet. So I just did an unboxing of North Star military figures, what they provided, uh, which was uh, three teams, the Spanish, the British and the French. So basically you have enough to do three units because that's what they are called. Where usually there is an officer and then a few uh, other uh, soldiers and different special specialties in each of the units. So one thing that they did not have, and this is I believe for the French and also for another, I believe the British as well, the French and the British, they have a native scout. So Britain, France, and Spain. Well, all three of them actually, so you see. Um, they have what's called a native scout. So um, this is a file that I got from uh, Sing uh, my manufactory, which I paid for. And it's a multi-part. So basically what you can do is just uh, print those parts. And uh, once you print them, you can uh, basically just... Uh, assemble them the way you want. So what I did was actually take the parts and as per my tutorial on mesh, mix, mix, mesh mixer, which I still cannot pronounce, um, you can put them back together. So the torso and the arms were the same, which are six. And so they actually were build together so that when they were split, if you put them in the mix mixture, mesh, mesh mixer, they already fit perfectly. And then I took a head that I liked and I moved it and that's is it. So now when you print this, and this is what I've done, you're gonna get into some issues. The North Star military figures tend to be a lot larger and I mean like beefier so I printed this guy already and it did not turn out quite the way I want it so let me launch a lychee slicer so I can show you exactly what I mean by that some other miniatures that I printed it all at the same time now the issue with this, uh, when you look at those miniatures, and is that they tend to be, like I said, a little bit too thin. And especially those miniatures, which I think are really cool, um, they tend to be too, either too thick or not tall enough or something. Yeah, they're not the same proportion as North Star military figures. So I printed the first batch, which ended up not fitting properly. So as you can see, this one now, the scale of the X and Y, which doesn't matter if you put the guy at an angle to for the support and everything, it's X and Y and Z will still be based on the miniature when you first import it. So... X and Y is 100% and then he's 103% tall so that it would be a little bit taller to fit better with um, the characters. Now if you look at, for example, this guy, well, he's the opposite. So he's 110 wide and 110 deep percent, that's percentage, but 100% tall. So I did not change his height but I did change basically his body uh, mass in a way, made him a lot more chunkier, and I, I should say, so that he would fit better with the same proportion as a North Star military figure. So how do you do that? Well, so let me clear this, re-import, uh, just one mini, probably I will do this, and the mini I just had in mix, mesh mixer, and I will show you the different technique. 
Oh, and by the way, if you want to know about the horse, the horse is actually huge uh, to start with. So it's 35% height only from the original file, but I kept 42% again to make him a little bit more chunkier to fit better with the, the North Star figures. Uh, by the way, this guy and this guy, that girl, are going to be uh, veteran hunter because I think they really look cool. And this guy in the back is going to be a occultist because he's a kind of look like a plague doctor and he's got like the fire and everything. This this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy and those guys are all basically native scout so well he's a chief but he's gonna be a native scout or I might change him to another role I need to see exactly what's in there so here you go uh, let me clear all this and get back to a fresh plate and then we'll look at how to proceed with that as you can see we have the two figures so he's running and he's just standing there so if you go to here to scale then you will see usually this is locked so that if you change one to like 106 percent everything else changed to 106 percent the entire thing now if you want to make that figure chunkier but not increase his height, then you want to be at 100%. You want to undo the lock and then choose this. Now, exactly what you need at that level as far as how big you want to make it, that you're going to have to take a look and just decide what you want to do. So before I did 110%, 110%, and you know, it doesn't look like much, but he is a little bit chunkier. Now, this guy, the problem was like, he's a little bit short. So I've increased it to 103% while keeping the other DMs okay. And that should be fine. So once you have that selected, then what you wanna do again is you wanna rotate most likely you want to do something like this. It's, it should be okay. Maybe put him a little bit this way. This guy, same thing. You might want to push him backwards. And then, of course, what you want to do is use the magic. You want to auto orientation off because we we just rotated them. Um, you can select both of them. I'm feeling lucky. And then they system will process add the different um, support and the bracing and all these things so it will do that for both minis and that's pretty much it you might want to take so those are two ranges of miniatures like this is the French Indian War and I will put the link below exactly where and this is Dark Heart something again I'll put the link below uh, so they are done by different sculptures so they will be proportioned differently so what you might want to do is you might want to look at this and be like okay how do I want my miniature to look? You might want to print those two first and then look and be like, okay, this guy needs to be a little bit more chunky or less. This guy needs to be a little bit less tall, more tall, less tall, less tall and then taller, not more tall. Uh, so basically that's what you want to do. Now, once you've done this, so you've put your, uh, you let the magic happen and you've put your 
support automatically. Then what you want to do, on Litchi again, go to prepare. Uh, I like to never do medium, uh, never do heavy, maybe medium or light, but what you want to do is island detector. So since I have this one only selected, it's going to detect only that one. So five islands and then this one do the same thing. And it's going to be five islands as well. Well, I don't know. It's going to be something else, maybe a few islands or we'll see what it comes up with. Six. So only one on this guy. So now you do show and it's going to show you where the issues are. So what you can do is add support to all island. Sometimes that's enough to get rid of all of them. So let's see. Nope, apparently not. One out of five, so let's go see the rest. Here we go. So now, could not support two of the islands, so now there's only two that are not supported. That's, yeah, that should not be too much of an issue. L, L print, you can add a little bit yeah, if you want, but again, and then Again, same place, so this you should just delete. It should be fine. If you really want, you can just add some little supports there. Or you can tilt him like a little bit. Because those supports, there should be fine. I mean, there might be an issue for printing, but you should be able to remove them pretty easily. Oh, it's because his head is not fully in also, so that might be why, but... Yeah, should be fine. So again, um... That is enough to export and to print. Now, you can only do this with unsupported mini because as soon as you have a mini that's already supported, then once you import it, the way it's tilted will be the way that it's gonna be. Now, if you go back to layout and you go back to your mini, you will see that if you go to scale, this is still pointing in exactly the same direction as it used to be. Like it's the same direction as the mini was when you imported it. Like the Z axis is still from his foot to his head. That's still a hundred percent. If you modify this now to a hundred and I don't know to like two hundred and fifty percent, you will see that his length will increase. Now you will have to redo all the supports, you will have to reuse the magic button because now this is completely wrong now because we completely changed the scale of the mini. So you will have to rerun this, but it's still the same. So now if that mini is not chunky enough and you want 120% on both of those, then you do 120% of both of those. And all of a sudden, yeah, here we go. Now is a is gonna be a chunky boy. But again, like those, support are not correct anymore so you need to rerun this so that it fits the new body shape and size so that's pretty quickly how i've done it the last batch that i've printed that i showed you in the beginning is currently printing and you might hear it in the background that's my printer going up and down and printing um I will see, because I printed the first batch, I was not happy, they were a little bit too thin and so on, and I figured that I might do a tutorial on, on exactly why I do this. Uh, and yeah, now, when you have monsters, then you don't care. Monsters can be whatever shape and size and all this. Uh, you might want to modify their size so that, you know, you don't want, you might want a werewolf that's, you know, like, Let's see, this guy is 35 tall with the rapier sticking out. So up to the rapier, to from the foot to the top of the rapier probably. It's 35 millimeters. You will want a werewolf that's about probably that size to the top of, it, of its head or maybe like 40 millimeter. And all of a sudden that werewolf is pretty big. Uh, you want a giant to be about like twice as this, so probably around 70 millimeter or something like this, maybe 60. 
um, you want a rat to be probably in one of those dimensions x and y you want it to be probably like 10 millimeters or something like this like a centimeter is already a big rat i mean if you take for example frost grave the rats there say the size of a cat so you know you look at the mini and you can use like if you have a mini and this is this is why i always say if you have a mini that you've printed that you know this is the right scale for you and fits with all of your other models then you take that mini you know exactly what proportion you gave that mini and then you import it in whatever project you're doing and you leave it on the whoops you leave it on the side and you can dim everything else from it so like for example if that guy was the guy that I wanted then that's it then I'm gonna get rid of everything else I will import my monster and all of a sudden I can look at the monster and be like okay how does that monster look compared to the mini with the proportion that I want and so on and so forth and you can do that with other minis as well like if this is the mini that you want print another like put another one next to it look do they look okay does one needs to be a little bit bigger does it need to be a little bit smaller does it need to be chunkier so on and so forth and you go through the same process of percentage increase in x and y but not in z like uh, or the guy is too small and sometimes this is the thing so you might want to oh this guy is too small let me increase his size to 110 percent but then the other dims you might want to increase them to 150 percent or something like this because you still want him chunkier or is super chunky and then you want it slimmer and then you will do 110 percent in height but oh, just keep the 100 percent in x and y which is kind of what i did with the with the indians because the french indian the french indian file uh with all the native americans are I think they're a little bit chunkier and short, so I've made them a little bit bigger, but I've kept their body thinner. So uh, I hope that helps. I will keep doing the silver bayonet. Uh, I will keep doing some tutorial like this as I go through the process of creating my own, well, of painting the units and doing all the units and everything. I'll probably do the same with frost grave which have already printed and painting quite a lot again please like subscribe leave a comment below uh, let me know what you want me to tackle next uh, as far as the silver bayonet or frost grave uh, if you have questions or comments and uh, yeah i'll keep working on those hopefully i can put some pictures of the finished product of that plate that you saw at the beginning um how it looks when it's finished printing i think there's still about 30 minutes of printing left and so yeah hope you uh hope you found this instructive and again if you have any questions or comments i will put those files link below they're all paid right now my mini factory has a black friday early black friday thing where you can get already some discounts so uh, you can check it out, register, and get some discounts. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, everyone. Welcome to my printing station. I am using a diff different microphone, so I hope the sound is going to be okay. Um, let's open it up. This is what I was talking about before. This is the plate that I was showing with the minis that I printed for the silver bayonet. Um, I've put it already sideways so it could drain. It's been draining for a while. And uh, let's look at this. All right. Doesn't look like there is any failure. Oh, actually, look like those two actually even touch. That's not good. Hopefully I can get those out properly all right first we're gonna go into the cleaning so i know i need to change my alcohol and 
There we go. And this is gonna go four. Usually I like to put four cleaning, a full plate like this, two minute and a half cleaning. And so while that's going, I uh, will pour the resin back into the bottle. The reason I do this is so I can check, make sure that uh, I have everything in there. So as you can see, my stand broke. So I'm going to have to eventually reprint that as well. All right, don't need that anymore. And so I will cut the sound and probably do a fast forward for those two and a half minutes. finish cleaning and of course you saw me spill resin all over because I'm trying to do that while filming and I'm far away from my station so I can film properly but anyways uh, all right so I like to use metal scraper they usually come out really easily there we go so oh, this is gonna go on the side and then we're gonna start removing <sighs> of course <laughs> really it's because i'm filming that i'm breaking everything god damn it anyways i usually do not break those because they're i just need to take my time i want to go too fast it's not too bad it's okay I can fix that. Yeah, the barrel is, of course, broken now. Damn it. All right, let's take my time. And this is my mix. So if you've not followed the podcast, uh, I do a mix. And this is what this bottle is. It is not straight resin. It is a mix of Siraya fast and tenacious five to one ratio five fast one tenacious part and it gives you the best results for miniatures because they are a little bit more flexible so yeah let's keep going hey another gun let's try not to Break that one. There we go. I should say rifle, not gun. There we go. One thing that I've not tried yet, and I really want to, is using hot water to help with the breaking off the supports. Apparently, if you uh, dunk this in hot water, it's a lot easier to get the supports off which honestly I mean like the first one of course I broke it but usually um, lychee supports if you stay with the light one they are pretty easy to remove um, I'm gonna accelerate the footage for this and I'm gonna go so I can take my time, but still for you guys, I'll go fast. 
and then we'll come back to what's left. All right, see you in a bit. and we're back uh, so you saw me change glove in the middle because I pierced the glove and this is still I know it's been gone in through the alcohol but it's still um, resin so yeah they look pretty good I will get them close to another mini but yeah really happy with those again uh, some native scouts is what those are and those are gonna be my pretty much my uh, veteran hunters so yeah pretty good really happy how they came out oh and that's gonna be Probably light cavalry, I would think. And uh, yeah, another native scout. All right, the next process is gonna be to cure those. So we get the alcohol away, we put the little table and as you can see it's uh, I don't know why but it kind of looks like it's all been cracked but anyways let's change the mode if you leave it in the other mode your pieces are gonna basically fly off <laughs> all right let's get this all in on there cure it so I'm really pissed that I, well actually, I could leave it like this and do a archibuse, archibuse, or something similar. Alright, here we go. Uh, that's going to be probably, I'm going to put one minute and then I will flip them and then I will do another probably 30 second. And then uh, that should be done. You don't need to cure too much. And uh, yeah, so again, a little bit of a fast forward right now, probably. It's gonna go and uh, we'll get that going. should be good for curing so here we go all right looking pretty good I will move this so that I can put them down and we can here we go compare with the gun barrel 
I might actually just leave it to make, like I said, like a kind of sort of shotgun type thing. That's in, that might look pretty cool. Uh, all right, so those are the minis. All right, and here we go. So, man, they still look, the other guys look so chunky. But as far as scale, height at least, uh, they're pretty close, so I'm happy with those. Uh, they'll be close enough. I mean, yeah, if you look, yeah, they're they're decent size. I think they all fit uh, pretty well with the rest. All right, so really happy how they turned out. Um, those are the. Spanish, I believe. Yes, because they have the Men of Faith or something similar. I still need to clean those. Whoop. Uh, is that? Yeah. There we go. So, yeah. But you see, this guy has got a very short cannon like. So, I'm thinking that that's what this guy is going to be carrying. So I don't even have to fix it. Yeah, that works for me. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little quick tour of the 3D printing. Again, if you have any questions on the miniatures and so on, uh, there's I'm going to put the links below on the places where I got them. Um, and uh, yeah, really happy with those. Let's keep on uh, trucking for the silver bayonet. Next stop is going to be the bestiary. And I have the bestiary for Frostgrave. And I need to seriously start looking at the bestiary for uh, the silver bayonet. All right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.